If form follows fiction, we could think of architecture and buildings as a space of stories. Stories of the people that live there, of the people that work in these buildings. And we could start to imagine the experiences our buildings create. In this sense, I'm interested in fiction, not as the implausible, but as the real, as the reality of what architecture means for the people that live in it and with it. Our buildings are prototypes, ideas for how the space of living or how the space of working could be different, and how a space of culture or a space of media could look like today. Our buildings are real, they're being built, they're an explicit engagement in physical reality and conceptual possibility. I think of our architecture as organizational structures. At their core is indeed structural thinking, like a system. How can we arrange things in both a functional and experiential way? How can we create structures that generate a series of relationships and narratives? And how can fictive stories of the inhabitants and users of our buildings script the architecture, while the architecture scripts those stories at the same time? And here comes the second term into play, what I call narrative hybrids. Structures of multiple simultaneous stories that unfold throughout the buildings we create. So we could think of architecture as complex systems of relationships, both on a programmatic and functional way, and in an experiential and emotive or social way. This is the headquarters for China's national broadcaster, when I first arrived in Beijing in 2002, the city planners showed us this image, a forest of several hundred skyscrapers to emerge in the central business district, except at that time only a handful of them existed. So we had to design in a context that we knew almost nothing about, except one thing, it would all be about verticality. Of course, the skyscraper is vertical. It's a profoundly hierarchical structure, the top always the best, the bottom the worst, and the taller you are, the better so it seems. And we wanted to ask ourselves, could a building be about a completely different quality? Could it undo this hierarchy? And could it be about a system that is more about collaboration than rather than isolation? So we took this needle and bent it back into itself, into a loop of interconnected activities. Our idea was to bring all aspects of television making into one single structure. News, program production, broadcasting, research and training, administration, all into a circuit of interconnected activities where people would meet in a process of exchange and collaboration. So the organizational structure of this building was a hybrid between the technical and the social, the human and the performative. And of course, we used the loop of the building as a circulatory system to thread everything together and to allow both visitors and staff to experience all these different functions in a great unity. With 473,000 square meters, it is one of the largest buildings ever built in the world. It has a population of over 10,000 people, and of course this is a scale that exceeds the comprehension of many things and the scale of typical architecture. So we stopped work for a while and sat down and cut 10,000 little sticks and glued them onto a model, just simply to confront ourselves with what that quantity actually meant. But of course it's not a number, it is the people, it is a community that inhabits the building. And in order to both comprehend this, but also script this architecture, we identified five characters, hypothetical characters, and we followed them throughout their day in a life in this building. Thought of where they would meet, what they would experience. So it was a way to script and design the building, but of course also to communicate its experiences. So architecture suddenly assumes the quality of a player of some, something that writes stories and performs stories. And I think that could be one of, of its primary meanings um, that we believe in.